NASA will soon add a new piece to its workhorse network of communications satellites with the launch of the Tedris-K spacecraft aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. Tedris is short for Tracking and Data Relay Satellite, and it continues to make a huge difference in the way astronauts and their spacecraft communicate with ground controllers. The first Tedris launched into orbit almost 30 years ago, when STS-6 astronauts deployed Tedris-1 from the space shuttle in April 1983. Before NASA launched its orbiting Tedris network, communications with spacecraft were sporadic, occurring only when the spacecraft passed near ground stations and antennas. With the space network in place, astronauts and ground controllers can talk to each other almost continuously. Just as important during this age of research in space, the TEDRIS satellites can convey round-the-clock data from automated experiments on the International Space Station to eager scientists looking for results. In addition, all of NASA's scientific spacecraft are built with communications gear that's compatible with the TEDRIS constellation so they can relay their observations to researchers. The Hubble Space Telescope images, along with all those taken by Earth observation spacecraft in low Earth orbit, go through a TEDRIS satellite before ground controllers and scientists receive them. Even a rocket ascending through the atmosphere during launch sends its telemetry through the TEDRIS network. It saves NASA the sometimes costly burden of having to maintain an array of ground stations, ships, and airplanes to communicate with a rocket in flight. The spacecraft launching from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station will be the 11th launch, but the first in about 10 years. It's also the first of the third generation TEDRIS satellites. A United Launch Alliance rocket was chosen for this mission several years ago. Stacked at Launch Complex 41 at the Cape, the Atlas V is expected to add to its legacy as a strong and reliable booster. We chose Atlas V as the ideal uh, launch service for the TEDRIS K mission because uh, they had the four meter payload fairing capability, which is the ideal size requirement for TGS K, and also the performance capability of the 401 version of an Atlas V rocket with no solid rocket motors is ideally suited for the 7,600 pound mass of a TGS K satellite going to geosynchronous orbit. The TDRIS satellite's solar arrays and signature communications antennas are folded tightly for launch. Once safely in space, the TDRIS will deploy its antennas and solar arrays and begin a three-month series of tests and calibration. Their antennas um, are furled, they come furled, and they have a, a margin, amount of, a certain amount of days that they can stay furled. If they pass that margin, then the antenna, when they're deployed, they can actually be, um, have a, a degradation in space and so it was it was really challenging trying to schedule the shipping of the spacecraft with the launch date that's that kept coming and changing it was very um, dynamic. Engineers also tracked the rocket's progress closely and had to perform more analysis after an engine similar to that used on the Atlas V Centaur upper stage suffered an issue during the launch last year on a different rocket. The launch team does not expect a similar complication with the Tedris K mission. Our engineers and analysts from Launch Services Program, working alongside United Launch Alliance's engineers, uh, we've been methodically reviewing data and have been working very closely on flight clearance for the Tedris K mission. So that's been our biggest challenge to date. The spacecraft will operate high above the planet in an orbit whose speed matches the rotation of the Earth exactly, allowing the satellite to appear to hover over the planet. From there, it can look down on a vast portion of the planet and offer direct communication between the International Space Station, numerous NASA satellites orbiting Earth, and the ground stations. So all of the communication coming out of Space Station goes through the TDRS network and is downlinked to the Earth through TDRS satellites. So we're looking forward to add to that capability and continue a robust communications capability for NASA. Though they provide a critical element for modern life on Earth, communication satellites sometimes are overlooked when it comes to the importance of spacecraft. And I think you know a lot of people maybe take it for granted. They don't realize or, or understand uh, how many communication satellites it takes and all the work it, it, that's involved in, in order to get and the, the progress that we make here on Earth with all the, the technology that we have out in space. Beyond its utility as a communications hub, 
The Teacher's K satellite, like all missions, makes a special place in the memory of the launch team sending it into orbit. Every mission's got its own uniqueness. I mean, they're all unique. Nothing is ever easy. Oh, when we're counting down to, <laughs> to launch, I think is the most exciting, you know, going into the terminal count, coming out of that last, uh, that last hold is always the most exciting. That's where the, um, your, the anxiety builds and you're just ready to go and, you know, until it launches. That's, that's the best part of the whole launch day.